Okay, are we starting? Uh, it is welcome back. Deuteronomy chapter 5, 6, and 7. Family Bible time. Isn't this fun? I am really enjoying these family Bible times. I hope you are too. Tell us if you're having a, a great time. Tell us if you if there are things that you, you find difficult. I'd love to know because if if you're there, maybe you're one of the children in another house um, and you're following this. I'd love to know if you're struggling with something. If we can make it easier for you, I'd like to do that. Um, but I, I'm just I'm just enjoying it. I think we're being blessed by it. And so, what, what, what have you got something you'd like to... More games. Okay. Yeah, we can't really do so many games whilst We've got the cat. I could, suppose I could get you to run up and down and do star jumps or something. Would you like that? No, okay, all right. Deuteronomy chapter five, let's pray. <laughs> Father in heaven, thank you for giving us food for our souls day by day from your word. Lord, you have said man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Lord, these are your words. These are, the, these are the words of God. We pray, Lord, that you'd open our hearts and help us as we read. Help us to not just let it pass through from ear to ear, as it were, but Lord, help us to, to hold it in our minds, to meditate upon it day and night, to think about these things and keep them fresh in our minds and ready on our tongues that we'd be able to answer the temptations that come to us with Scripture, just like you did um, in, the, in the temptation in the wilderness, Lord Jesus. Thank you for that example. Help us to be similarly armed and ready by the study of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And Moses summoned all Israel and said to them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and the rules that I speak in your hearing today, and you shall learn them and be careful to do them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us at Horeb. That's Sinai. I've never heard it called the Horeb covenant by anybody. Anyways, they call it the Sinaitic covenant covenant or the Sinai covenant or the Mosaic covenant, speaking about Moses. Not with our fathers did the Lord make this covenant, which means that this covenant is not an eternal covenant, but with us who are all of us here alive today. The Lord spoke with you face to face at the mountain, out of the midst of the fire. While I stood between the Lord and you at that time to declare to you the word of the Lord, for you were afraid because of the fire and you did not go up into the mountain. He said, here come the Ten Commandments all over again. Are you ready? I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the, on earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, 
But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter or your male servant or your female servant or your ox or your donkey or any of your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gates that your male servant and your female servant may rest as well as you. For you shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. Honour your father and your mother, as the Lord your God commanded you, that your days may be long and that it may go well with you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbour. And you shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You shall not desire your neighbor's house, his field, his, or his male servant, or his female servant, his ox, his, or his donkey, or anything that is your neighbor's. These words the Lord spoke to all your assembly at the mountain, out of the midst of the fire, the cloud and the out of the midst of the fire, the cloud and the thick darkness, with a loud voice, and he added no more. Interesting, isn't it? Don't make the scratching noise. And he wrote them on two tablets of stone and gave them to me. As soon as you heard the voice out of the midst of the darkness, while the mountain was burning with fire, you came near to me, all the heads of your tribes and your elders, and you said, Behold, the Lord our God has shown us his glory and greatness, and we have heard his voice out of the midst of the fire. This day we have seen God speak with man, and man still live. Now therefore, why should we die? For this great fire will consume us. If we hear the voice of the Lord our God any more, we shall die. For who is there of all flesh that has heard the voice of the living God out of speaking out of the midst of fire as we have heard, as we have and still lived? Go near and, and hear all the Lord that the Lord will say and speak to us all that the Lord our God will speak to you and, and we will hear and do it. And the Lord heard your words when you spoke to me. And the Lord said to me, I have heard all, I have heard the words of this people which they have spoken to you. They are right in all that they have spoken. Oh, that they had such a mind as this always to fear me and to keep all my commandments, that it might go well with them and their descendants forever. Go and say to them, return to your tents. But you stand here by me and I will tell you the whole commandment and the statutes and the rules that you shall teach them. Did you notice that? The whole commandment, that's singular, there's no S on the end. And the statutes, that's plural, and the rules, seems like God is talking about the commandment as a single thing, just one big block of commandment. And if you, and that's, I think, partly why in the New Testament says if you break one, you've broken them all. You've, you've broken the commandment. That's why we're all sinners. You can't say, oh, I've just broken one. No, if you break one, you break it all. It's a covenant. It's a commandment. Anyway, um, where were we? The whole commandment and the statutes and the rules that you shall teach them 
that, that you shall teach them, that they may do them in the land that I am giving them to possess. Verse 32. You shall be careful, therefore, to do as the Lord your God has commanded you. You shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. You shall walk in the way, in all the way that the Lord your God has commanded you, that you may live, and that it may go well with you, and that you may live long in the land that you shall possess. There we are, three consequences, that you may live in other words, they're going to die if they disobey. That it may go well with you. It's not going to go well with them if they don't do what they've been told. And that you may live long in the land that you possess. Well, they weren't going to live long there if they disobeyed. All right, chapter 6. <clears throat> now, this is the commandment. The statutes. Now, here we go again. The commandment, singular. The statutes, plural, and the rules that the Lord your God. Can you stop scratching your Bible, please? It's making a noise. Just I know you're probably not aware of it, but this is the commandment, the statutes, and the rules that the Lord your God commanded me to teach you, that you may do them in the land to which you are going over to possess that you may fear the Lord your God, you and your son and your son's son, by keeping all his statutes. Do you see that? That you may fear the Lord your God by keeping all his statutes and his commandments. Sometimes people can think, well, what does it mean to fear God? Am I supposed to be like trembling and afraid? <laughs> Well, there's, there's some way in which you ought to tremble inwardly, but you, you ought to tremble inwardly to, to disobey him. It's a bit like, I mean, you know that I will discipline you if, if you disobey us, if you dishonor your parents. If this is one, one serious rule in our house always, um, and it ought to be in every household. We've just read it. Honour your father and your mother. So if there's any dishonouring, well, then there's going to be discipline. But then if, because of that, you know that there's going to be discipline, then, then you're afraid in a certain sense. That doesn't mean you don't know that I love you or that you don't know that mummy loves you, but you can still be, you can still know that you're loved and also be afraid of discipline, be afraid of disobeying, and that's helpful, isn't it? Well, so how do you, how do you fear God? Now, this is interesting. One way you can practically fear God is by keeping all his statutes. And if you don't, if you're not worried about keeping all the statutes, you can't really say that if you can't, you're not worried about obeying God. No, we don't have all the same statutes. Let me just be clear about that. In the New Testament, we have the law of Christ, but these people had all these old, all these specific rules and um, statutes, and they had to keep all of these ones. Well, we don't have all the same ones today, but we've still got commands from Jesus and in the New Testament and we should want to know them and we should want to obey them and if we don't well then we don't fear God do we it's, it's pretty simple if you don't want to know them if you don't want to obey them well what what, mm. what does that say about you that's what Jesus said if you love me keep my commandments and you think oh yeah makes sense doesn't it if you don't love him you're not interested. If you do love him, you'd fear to disobey him. Anyway, that's an interesting verse, isn't it? That you may fear the Lord your God, verse 2, you and your son and your son's son, by keeping all his statutes and his commandments, which I command you all the days of your life, and that your days may be long. Verse 3. 
Hear, therefore, O Israel, and be careful to do them, that it may go well with you, and that you may multiply greatly, as the Lord, the God of our fathers, has promised you, in, the, in a land flowing with milk and honey. So, did you get that? Hear and obey. Hear and obey. It's not enough just to listen, is it? It's not enough just to hear, but there has to be an obedience to the commandment. Right, here we go. This is one of the most famous parts in all the Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. This is what the Jews call the Shema. And that's because the word for hear is Shema in, in Hebrew. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by oh we're sitting in the house aren't you and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise you shall bind them on as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes you know what that is don't you a little box that they wear not quite sure if that's what was meant, but you shall write them on your doorposts, on the, on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And when the Lord your God brings you into the land that he swore to your, your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob to give you with great and good cities that you did not build, and houses full of good things that you did not fill, and cisterns that you did not dig, and vineyards and olive trees that you did not plant. And when you eat and are full, take care, then take care, lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. It is the Lord your God that you shall fear. Him you shall serve, and by his name you shall swear. You shall not go after other gods, the gods of the people who are around you, for the Lord your God in your midst is a jealous God, lest the anger of the Lord your God be kindled against you, and, and he destroy you from off the face of the earth. You shall not put the Lord your God to the test, as you tested him at Massah. Do you remember Jesus quoted that to the mm. devil, didn't he? That means Jesus, our saviour, memorised this bit of the Bible mm. well enough that when it came to it and the devil was tempting him, he had this ready on his tongue and he could just answer the devil with scripture. Of course he did, yes. So but maybe he memorized it beforehand and then when he was nervous. Well, Je that's, a, that's the strange thing about Jesus' um, humanity and his deity. So Jesus is God, isn't he? But Jesus is also truly man. So Jesus could go to Lazarus's tomb and say, where have you laid him? And it wasn't like Jesus was lying. He wasn't, he wasn't saying, um, he wasn't making that up. As a human, his human mind, he, he didn't know where they'd laid him. Um, and, and yet, of course, his, as God, he knew, but somehow he kept that knowledge from his human mind. 
so that he didn't know everything all of the time. And that's interesting because in the Bible it says Jesus learned wisdom as a child. That means he had to he had to memorize the Bible as well. So I think when he answered the devil, he was answering the devil with knowledge he gained, just like you're gaining it now, by hearing the Bible and learning it and and understanding it and treasuring it and treasuring it up in his heart. So I think as a human um, his his human mind had to had to learn these things. And that's good because it helps us to realise that just Jesus Jesus could do that with the help of the Holy Spirit and he could do that perfectly. So it helps us to realise that we you know we, we can follow him. Uh, we we too have to learn it. Anyway, uh, little aside. That, that's a good little aside, wasn't it? So, where are we? Um, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test as you tested him at Massah. Verse 17. You shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his testimonies and his statutes. Now you see there's commandments plural and testimonies plural and statutes plural which he has commanded you. Verse 18. And you shall do what is right and good in the sight of the Lord that it may go well with you and that you may go in and take possession of the good land that the Lord swore to your to give to your fathers by thrusting out all your enemies from before you as the Lord has promised. When your son asks you in time to come, what is the meaning of the testimonies and the statutes and the rules that the Lord our God has commanded you? Then you shall say to your son, by the way, when it says your son, it doesn't mean and not your daughter. So if your daughter asks a question, you can answer her too. But that's just the way they would say it. They would just use one word to refer to the sons or daughters. They just don't say everything twice. Then you shall say to your son, we were Pharaoh's slaves in Egypt. And the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And the Lord showed signs and wonders, great and grievous against Egypt and against Pharaoh and, against, and, and, and all his household before our eyes. And he brought us out from there that he might bring us in and give us the land that he swore to give to our fathers. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as we are this day. So, so, so the commandments, hold on a minute, it just says there that the commandments are for, see I've got it underlined, for our good. They're for our good. So these commandments are actually for our benefit. And, and verse 25, it will be righteousness for us if we are careful to do all this commandment before the Lord our God as he has commanded us. Now, we're not done. We've still got chapter 7, but I have to talk about this. In what sense? Now, this is a, a question that um, you grown-ups are going to have to think long and hard about and children it's worth worth listening carefully to in what sense will it be righteousness for the people of Israel they're receiving this commandment this was to them in what sense would it be righteousness for them if they were careful to do all this commandment before the Lord our God as he commanded them and how does that work how does it work that they obey the Lord and it's righteousness for them? Is this... Now some people have taught this in, in the past and I think they're wrong. 
Is this salvation by, by works? Is this, is this the Jews keeping the commandments and then they are righteous? Why would we say that? Why would I say I think they're wrong? I think they're wrong because the whole system of law that God gives them, all the commandments and all the stipulations and the rules, include all the, all the commandments about how to be forgiven and how to have your sin atoned for. And this never... It's never assumed that they're going to be able to, to keep all these commandments. It's always assumed that they're going to sin and they're going to need forgiveness. And so the commandments and the rules teach them how to get forgiveness. If they sin, they go and they bring a sacrifice. And when they sacrifice, their sin can be atoned for. And do you remember what it said in Leviticus? And it will be forgiven him. And he will be forgiven. And you think, oh, praise God. They could know when the animal was sacrificed, when the substitute had been made, when the blood had been poured out, and the sacrifice had been done, and the pleasing aroma had gone up to the Lord. They could know, oh, I'm forgiven. That whole system was set up to show them how they could be forgiven for their sins but it was also set up to give them rules commandments rules stipulations that they had to keep so that they could remain holy and live in a way that pleased the lord now that that's okay you you could say well how would it be righteousness for them if they obeyed everything well if they listened to the, all the commandments and all the stipulations that were given them, they would know that they're terrible sinners, aren't they? They would know. Every child that disobeyed his parents would think, oh, I've, I've broken the commandment. I'm a sinner. I need to be forgiven. And every, every person who lied would think, I'm... I'm a sinner. I need to be forgiven. But then within the the law that was given them were all the rules about, okay, what do you do now? Okay, you go and you have a sacrifice and then, ha, oh, I'm forgiven because the sacrifice has been made. Now, so they would, by keeping all the rules, it would be righteousness for them. They would know that their, their, their sins are forgiven, but they're also following all the rules. And they knew that there was a promise of a Messiah coming one day who would f finally, this goes back to Genesis chapter 3, the seed of the woman who would finally solve the problem. They knew the prophecy from Genesis chapter 22, that on the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. And they knew that one day the Messiah would come somehow and solve the problem of sin. But, and defeat the devil and fix this thing. So the sacrifices pointed forwards for them to the coming of the Messiah one day. So if they were, f yes. Um, it's a question, but it's not part of this. I was just wondering, you know how people say we are from Adam and Eve? Yes. Well, when the Lord made the flood, basically we're, we come from Noah's sons, right? Correct. Yes, we're all descended from Adam and Eve, and we're all descended from Noah and his sons. Correct. Okay. Um, now, where were we? Yes. How would it be righteousness for them? So don't, don't allow that to distract you because this is a really, really important
important thought. Now for us today, it's going to be, we're told in the New Testament to obey the good news. When people uh, are saved, there it's it said it says they they obeyed the gospel or they need to obey the gospel you say well how do you obey the good news well the good news says in the new testament repent of your sins and trust in the death of the sacrifice of jesus for all your sins but then there are all in the new testament there are all the the, the law we call it the law of christ as all the laws that Jesus gave. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And he told his disciples what to do. And, and look, if we, if we ignore that and disobey it, and we just forget, forget it, we're not being holy, are we? We're not walking in a way pleasing to the Lord, and the Lord will discipline us. And, and, and yet, we're not given all those rules as a way to be saved. It's Jesus' sacrifice that saves us. It's repentance from our sin and faith in the Lord Jesus and his sacrifice. That's what saves us. Nothing to do with keeping the rules that saves us. But still, if, if we don't keep the rules, well, it's not going to be righteousness for us. We're not going to be we're not going to walk pleasing to God and we will be disciplined. These people, if they didn't keep the rules, well, it wouldn't be righteousness for them and they would be disciplined by God and they wouldn't live long in the land. So it's actually very similar. I'm just going to check with my theologian over here to say, am I making sense? I'm just kind of trying to explain this at whatever time of the morning it is early. Okay, seven... Chapter 7, I hope it makes sense to you. I'd love to hear your comments. Let's do this. Chapter 7. When the Lord your God brings you into the land that you are entering to take possession of it and clears away many nations before you, the Hittites, the can you say these words? The Hittites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, that's the Itchiites, and the Jebusites, Seven nations more numerous and mightier than yourselves. And when the Lord your God gives them over to you and you defeat them, then you must devote them to complete destruction. You shall make no covenant with them and show no mercy to them. You shall not intermarry with them, giving your daughters to their sons or taking their daughters for your sons. For they would turn, this is the reason, they would turn away your sons from following me and to serve other gods. Then the anger of the Lord would be kindled against you and he would quickly he would destroy you quickly. But thus shall you deal with them. You shall break down their altars and dash in pieces their pillars and chop down their asherim and burn their carved images with fire. For you are a people Holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for his treasured possession out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. It was not because, this is important, isn't it? God's chosen people of Israel. Why? It was not because you were more in number than any other people that the Lord set his love on you and chose you. For you were the fewest of all peoples. But it is because the Lord loves you and is keeping the oath that he swore to your fathers that the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of slavery, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God, who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him, and keep his commandments to a thousand generations and repays to their face those who hate him by destroying them. He will not be slack with the one who hates him. He will repay him to his face. You shall therefore be careful to do the commandment and the statutes and the rules 
that I command you today. And because you listen to these rules and do them, the Lord your God will keep with you the covenant and the steadfast love that he swore to your fathers. Okay, quick point for the grown-ups. This introduces what seems like conditionality to the covenant. You say, what? Conditionality to the covenant? Yes, the covenant with Abraham was unconditional. And now it seems as though God is saying, because you keep them, um, the Lord will keep with you the covenant. So does this mean that the Abrahamic covenant is now conditional? No, it was given in an unconditional way. There were no conditions given and God will fulfill his part of the bargain. But just like God, when the, peop- the, when the previous generation to these, this generation that Moses is speaking to, when they sinned and disobeyed, God didn't bring them into the land of the promised land. He, they all perished in the wilderness. Just like they perished in the wilderness, but God kept his promise and brought this generation into the land, It's the same with the whole covenant of Abraham. God will keep his covenant. I believe that means God will save the Jews one day. He'll give them a new heart. He'll rescue them and and fulfill all his promises to them. But, you know, if they don't turn to him with all their heart and all their soul, well, that that generation won't inherit the, the promises. Uh, he, he, he will discipline them, and so that's where they're at at the moment. Verse 13. He will love you and bless you and multiply you. He will also bless the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your ground, your grain and your wine and your oil, the increase of your herds and the young of your flock in the land that he swore to your fathers to give you. You shall be blessed above all peoples. Notice that conditional part of the covenant. You shall... There shall not be male or female barren among you or among your livestock. And the Lord will take away from you all sickness and none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which you knew will he inflict on you, but he will lay them on all who hate you. And you shall consume all the peoples that the Lord your God will give over to you. Your eyes shall not pity them, neither shall you serve their gods, for that would be a snare to you. If you say in your heart, these nations are are greater than I, how can I dispossess them? You shall not be afraid of them, but shall remember what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh and to all Egypt. The great trials that your eyes saw, the signs, the wonders, the mighty hand and the outstretched arm by which the Lord your God brought you out, so will the Lord your God do to all the peoples of whom you are afraid. Moreover, the Lord your God will send hornets among them until those who are left and hide themselves from you are destroyed. You shall not be in dread of them, for the Lord your God is in your midst, a great and awesome God. The Lord your God will clear away these nations before you little by little. You may not make an end of them at once, lest the wild beasts grow too numerous for you. But the Lord your God will give them over to you and throw them into great confusion until they're destroyed. And he will give their kings into your land, into your hand, and you shall make their name perish from under heaven. No one shall be able to stand against you until you have destroyed them. Have you ever met a Jebusite, or a Hittite, or a Hivite? But you have met an Israelite. (laughs) That's because all these things came true. The carved images of their gods you shall burn with fire. You shall not covet the silver or the gold that is on them, or take it for yourselves, lest you be ensnared by it. For it is an abomination to the Lord your God. And you shall not bring an abominable thing into your house, and become devoted to destruction like it. Oh dear, remember Achan? We're going to learn about that. Let you shall utterly detest it and abhor it, and abhor it. 
for it is devoted to destruction. Well, praise the Lord for his word. Praise the Lord for the way he instructed his people Israel on the plains of Moab before they went into the promised land. That's where we are right now. Deuteronomy chapter 7 tomorrow. Deuteronomy chapter 8 is one of the most wonderful chapters. Mm. Looking forward to it. God bless you. Let's pray. Father in heaven, please strengthen us and bless us through your word. Teach us. Lord, may these things be ready on our tongues that we can answer the temptations of the devil like you did. And please help us to treasure them up in our hearts that we would love and obey you and fear you. Help us to understand the differences between the, the covenants and help us to under, begin to understand more and more the, the, the way in which you revealed yourself to Israel and the way in which you have revealed yourself in the New Testament through Christ and his law. And Lord, teach us to, to fully love and obey you in every way. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow. And I'll see you today. Mm-hmm.